the football family in Nigeria. Oh, we're not in a good mood. You know why? Because just last week, we lost two important factors in the development of Nigerian football. Super Eagles coaches, Stephen Keshi and Amadou Shwaibu passed away. In 2009, it was coach Amadou Shwaibu that gave Sonia Luko his first chance to play for Nigeria in that international friendly game uh, against Ireland. And it was coach Stephen Keshi that called him up again to play competitive football for Nigeria. Super Eagles player Sonia Aluko joins us now in the studio to talk about club and country football and of course what he is doing with himself at the moment. Sonia, good to have you on the program. Good to be here. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. What a time. What a time we have in our hands. Two men that are very, you know, uh, influential to your career, mm. gone in one week. How did you take the news? Um, obviously, I was very, very sad and very, you know, I was shocked at the, especially, you know, Keshi, Keshi, you know, losing his life initially. You know, that was a big surprise to me. It was a you know, a, a big impact in my international career, especially, you know, playing competitive games and giving me my, you know, my real breakthrough into the, into the Super Eagles team. And then, you know, the, uh, three days later, we hear about Coach Amodu. Um, and at first, I, I didn't even believe it. I thought maybe, okay, I saw it on Twitter <laughs> initially. I thought maybe, okay, this is, you know, a bad hoax or a yeah. prank or something like that. And then when the news started coming in, I was, I was numb. You know, it was two pillars of, of Nigerian football going, going at such a, Close time in the same city was a you know a big shock. Wow. Big shock. For oh, yeah, big shock indeed. I mean, uh, you you worked uh, with both coaches, and um, what is it about them that actually makes them thick as coaches? Are there any similarities in the methods in the training methods? Yeah, there there, there were. Um, I think as as men and uh, people initially was that's the, the the thing I remember the most. Like when I first came into the camp and Amudu was coach, you know, he he greeted me so warmly as if. I, it was my hundredth cap, you know. That's that's one thing that sticks with me a lot. They gave me a big hug, and I've just transferred from in England youth football into Nigerian football, and said, you know, we're we're, so, we're we're proud, we're so happy to have you here, you know. Um, and as a coach, you know, he said I didn't even expect to to play in that game. And then he started me after a few training sessions, and said, you know, you trained really well, and you know, we're keen to see what you can do. So, you know, that was a, a childhood dream realized for me. So that yeah. that's a you know a, a big memory for me and. Keshi as well, who was was so warm to me, was um he was a big believer in me at a time when, you know, a lot of Nigerians weren't sure yeah. what I was offering to the team, what I could bring to the team. He gave me my, kept putting me on like you know, I was doing well in changing games and then the South Africa game where I scored yeah, scored so the two goals. goals. Yeah, yeah that Nigeria, was uh, on the Keshi. Yeah, that was you know, again, very happy moments for me that you know they've been big parts of so you know, may their souls rest in peace and have mm. always have fond memories of them. Oh. Yeah, man. Wow. Well, I mean, but for both of them, you know, you, you, you played under them. What was the factor? What, what what's the difference between Stephen Keshi and uh, um, uh, Amudu Um, You know, I only had the one game under Amudu okay, yeah. It's harder for me to say that the big differences, but with, okay. with Keshi, straight away, you knew, you knew what he wanted from you. You know, there was no grey area. You couldn't say, oh, I did that because I didn't know. He was very clear of, I want you to be like this. I want, I want very big on team spirit, on playing. To it like a, as a team and not having many individual players, and I think that's why Nigeria had the success it had under him because he, he really pushed that team ethic more than 11 great players. Which Nigeria have always had talent and we've always had good players of ability, but we haven't always played as a, as a team, and, and that's why we had the success we had. So, I think that was the big thing I can say from his coaching methods. Were well, let's, let's talk about your club career. Um, yeah. We know that recently Hall City just uh, said, okay, so then you're, you're free to go after uh, coming back to the EPL. What's next for you? So then you have to tell us here, yeah, we need to know where you're going to next. I don't read it from no blog or the internet. You need to tell us what's going on, particularly with your next club move. Um, well, first of all, just like, you know, Hall City, I was there four years and I very, I always have good memories for them. You know, it was, I think it was mutually, a decision mutually that benefited every, all parties that I moved on. Um, and you know, we have a bit of a change of change of direction from change of direction for me. My next club, I, I wish I could tell you now, but <laughs> I haven't made a decision yet. Um, yeah. I'm kind of out here in Nigeria doing other things, and I wanted to come away and think about it more. Because um, you know, I'm 27 now, coming to yeah. the, the peak of my career, yeah. so it's important that I make a a good football decision next. I don't want to rush that decision, so. When I make the decision, I'll, I'll let you know. But I'll make a rush at you. What's that one club? <laughs> <laughs> that one club that your agent keeps calling. Look, these guys are still talking uh, to me. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, what a name. There's more than one. There's more than oh. one. So I don't want to say put a name out there and then people oh. start, it, it adds to the situation more. Um, mm. 
Like I said, I'll, I'll, you'll be one of the first guys okay. to know. So I'll, I'll give you <laughs> he that. doesn't want to answer should, that. Should, should, should we let clearly, him go? <laughs> clearly, yeah, I'm not going to let him off the hook totally. <laughs> I mean, you've played all your career in, in the UK, you know, for Rangers, um, mm. Blackpool, Birmingham and the likes. Are you starting to think about, you know, moving abroad to further your career? It's something I've considered. Um, it's something I definitely have considered. I always, you know, it's, it's hard for someone who grew up in in UK and, you know, you dreamed of playing in Premier League and that was always the vision to play in England. So it's hard for, that's why English players don't really leave England. Because mm. yeah, one of the strongest leagues in the world and it's the one you dream about playing in. So I wouldn't be, I wouldn't, I'm not against going abroad, but... Yeah, you're not that adventurous though. You're I am. I am. Okay, so Hopefully one day I will play abroad, but yeah. I'm not sure if it will be the next, no, no. The next yes, step. Yes. So then you're back in Nigeria. I know you're an ambassador for uh, the City of David Football Club. Uh, what's going on? So we're doing the second edition of the Ambassadors Cup that we did last year, which is um, an under-17 competition for eight teams that we do, which, you know, I had so much fun doing it last year and I made sure that, okay, we need to do it again this year and do it bigger and do it better. So that will be starting tomorrow ending with the final on Saturday so just a chance for boys to showcase their mm. their talents and expose them to you know hopefully bigger bigger situations and opportunities to become pro professional footballers one day mm. okay like the boys you're talking about what age are we looking at like yeah uh, so it's from on the 17 so 15 okay, 15 okay. upwards um, and okay. usually is, uh, the teams that the age of the boys who go there any prospects for them it's just like every year I mean like the ones who participated last year are they going to be here this year and what's usually the prospect for them after that? Uh, if they're young enough, they can come again. They can come <laughs> again this year. Um, like the, the ones who we, we spot and think, hey, these ones are really talented, obviously, COD will try and take them into their, their own team. But it's also just exposing them and you know, a lot of other clubs come and watch the competition and see good players and hopefully you know, one day they'll pick up to be picked up into bigger clubs and go on to you know, be super good players or play, play abroad one day. That's, that's the dream for me, that, to have to be able to say, okay, I helped this boy on his pathway to football because many people helped me. Yeah, but, but so as an ambassador, is there an, ag is there an agreement with COD to take some of these talents right into the club? I um, mean, into COD, yeah. United, yeah, 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 of course, you know, they're, they're first in line because they host the competition. That's right. Um, so hopefully, you know, the, the boys who impress, like I said, they'll be, they can go straight into COD United and offer scholarships, you know. COD is big on nurturing the hopeful package, just not just footballers, but making them better young men for society as well. So uh, I think it's, it's a great club, and that's why I decided to be ambassador. We share the same same values. Okay, and I mean, uh, it's the second edition. Uh, the last one last year, uh, as any player, you know, come out of that uh, particular uh, tournament and graduated into the COD team. Funnily enough, COD had a team there last year, and they won the competition. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was the last team. Yeah, the, the, the team right now, obviously, they've, they've taken the best boys yeah. already. Yeah. Um, so I think there, there might be a couple from other teams who they, they looked at, and you know, I don't know if they ended up being a COD, but oh, okay. we also, also hosted trials last year for, for COD, and I think it was like a 1,000 boys turned up. So the, wow. the numbers are, are, are huge. As I said, in Nigeria, we have talent from all over the place, you know, yeah. boys can come, a thousand boys can turn up from a game like two days notice, so, um, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it, I was, you know, taken aback, so, um, I think it's a, it's, put, it's a good time for Nigerian football, you know, the future of Nigerian football is still bright. Yeah, let's talk bright. about the future of Nigerian football being bright, particularly with this present crop of Super Eagles players, uh, where you played, uh, Fortunately, we didn't qualify for the Cup of Nations. 2017 were not there again. What's really going on? This phase of Nigerian football, what's going on with this current crop of Super Eagles? Um, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to say. One thing I know in football, that once you, like we talk about, you know, teams have a culture. After a while, so teams that win have a culture of winning. You just see, you know, Man United of 1990s, 2000s, just keep on winning because they have right. a, a good culture. I think at the moment in Nigeria, the culture is wrong. And in three of the last four Nations Cups, we haven't been there. For a country of our size, that's wow. it's embarrassing. You know, embarrassing. It's, it's, it's really poor. So I think we have the ability, we have top players playing in the top leagues, but there's something, there's a gap in, in what we're doing or the way we're working. And I think I have to say, it starts from the NFF. At the moment, they're going through Hello. You know, troubled times. But you know, everyone's pulling in the same direction, hopefully, and you know, things will change. But at the moment, we're going through a culture of, of failure, and we need to change that quickly. So what's the gap you're talking about now? Is there some of the gap there? Well, what the gap as well. It's not. Like we don't. It's not like we don't have good players. If we said, okay, right now we're not producing good enough players, I'd say, okay, that's the problem. But we have the players, but we're not getting success. So there's a gap between our resources and the results. And I don't know what exactly that is. I'm not qualified to <laughs> make those um, 
the decisions, but somebody needs to. Make the decision. Yeah. Oh. Maybe consistency in coaching or just help. In that, that would help. Having a coach more than three or four games, you know, having a coach that's there for maybe two competitions, three competitions, so we can get a consistent run of players, consistent run of games playing, and hopefully that changes things. A lot of doubts here and there. Um, is it that this team lacks quality? It can't be. You know, this. If you see that, the, if you go through the list of players, they're playing at high levels in their clubs in, in Europe or around the world. So it's not that the other African teams have better players than us. If most of our players would get into the other countries' teams if we were from that country. So you can't look at like a Congo team and say they have better squad than Nigeria have or any African team. Mm. We have we have a strong squad. It's just that we're not producing the performances and the results consistently. Yeah. So mm. it's our quality, definitely. That's not I don't think so. I don't okay. think so. Fair enough. Yeah, before we let uh, Sonny go, yeah. um, I mean, I need you to just clarify. It's 27 and a couple of uh, media, online media outlets, they're putting former Spigers in front of your name. Are you retired from international football? No, no <laughs> I'll, I'll never retire. Super Eagles will retire me. To be yeah. honest. I'm not, not going to play that will come out, ever come out and say oh, I'm, I'm retired from international football, even when I'm 35, 37. If, I, if they keep calling me up, I'll keep coming. Um, so, yeah, I'm still very much available for it. Yeah, just a quick one. I mean, you decided to play for Nigeria, but your sister, yeah. Niola, you know, plays for the English national team. She's yeah. played like up to 90 times now, the most cap. Yeah, she's played 100 now. 100, yeah. 100 right 100 now. Cap was wow. a couple months ago, yeah. So. <laughs> so, why did she decide to play for England and you decided to play for Nigeria? Um, I must say, she didn't really decide. Before she was in Nigeria, we were even aware of her. She'd already been called up for England. So, I think from a very young age, they put her into the first team. So, that decision was already taken out of her hands. I went through the 16, 17, 18, 19, you know, I went through the stages a lot. If I'd been like a Phil Walcott who at 16, they called him up for England national team, I would have played for England. Hmm. But it was, um, I now got the choice on the 20 of being called up for both countries and, you know, my vision as a child was Kanu or Kocha, World Cups and hmm. that's why I decided to play for Nigeria. It was more of a heart decision than anything else. Okay, so they said we gotta go now. That's yeah. what they're telling me. But someone on Twitter says, Austin, you asked him for World Club. He says, Sevra, that suddenly should tell us one team that is talking to him at the moment. We just need to hear one club. So. No, I, I can't, <laughs> one club. I can't give you your know, one club. Southampton. We're negotiating with, those, with these clubs. I can't West Ham. <laughs> I can't name any clubs. Come on, so. Sonny, we're going. Let him go. <laughs> you know, there's, there's Premier League, Championship, there's, you know. Everywhere. Viewer from abroad, so from abroad. it's varied, yeah. Oh, okay. We'll continue after the show. Yeah. <laughs>